our friend Michael O'Neill, owner of B&K Electric, and this guy has more knowledge about electrical things than you would ever even want to know. But today, Mike O'Neill, welcome back to the show. We're talking about your electrical inspection checklist, and this is more or less for, for what? For buyers that are going to purchase a home, Mike, or could this also work for sellers as well? Uh, thank you, Emilio. Yes, um, thank you for having me on your show again. Uh, there are many issues to look out for, but three simple ones that come up quite often are GFCI protection, uh, smoke alarms, smoke alarm de- detection or carbon, and also um, uh, what was it? Lack lack of circuits or, or fuses. Okay, yeah, uh, comes up all the time, and uh, the list goes on and on and on. But easy ways to fix GFCI protection is if all you need to know is where, this, where it's wet, you mm-hmm. have to have GFCI protection. That's it. So if you can get an electrician to come in and just prep that up for you, less mm-hmm. things to come up on a report, the better, because gonna, yes. it's going to be tough later on to get people when you need them for the closing. So these are things you just have to do right off the bat. GFCI protection, wet areas, outside and inside, all so, wet areas. So, Mike, Thanks. oh, I'm sorry. Garages. D- yeah, go ahead. Mike, GFCI. Now, I, I, I know it's ground fault. Interrupter, but what's the the C stand for in there? Circuit interrupter. Yes, ground fault circuit interrupter. Exactly. Okay. All right. So basically, if there's a wet area and water gets into that socket, it's gonna it's gonna click, and it's you know it's the ones that you have in yeah. your kitchen or you should have in your kitchen, and it'll shut off so that it it doesn't start a fire. Correct. Exactly. You got a reset button on them. Yes. That is the number one complaint in in, uh, home inspections is those things. And they're really, they're a pretty easy fix. And keep in mind, uh, sellers and buyers alike, well, well, sellers especially, for every $1 worth of repairs, a buyer's asking for $3 worth of credit. Okay, you hear me say it every show because I'm trying to drive that point home and make you more money when you're selling and also make uh, you know things a little bit easier going for buyers when they go in there. So, Mike, that's a, that's a great point. Thank you. So bathrooms and kitchens yep. must have GFCIs. And outside. And out, outside. Yep. 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 Patio. Patio, you know, yep. Outside of the shed, outside the garage, wherever there's plugs. There's also weatherproof ones that... They have WP on them for outside, but that's another. What's the electrician WP? will know when, when he's installing them. He's going to use a WP type for outside. What's WP, Mike? Weather, weather permitted, weather, weather, weather resistant. That's what it okay. is. WR on the, on the plug. Okay. So, so smokes and carbon monoxide detectors, uh, I, I imagine that uh, building inspectors are leaning more towards having hardwired smokes, especially in new construction, oh, they correct? They have to. They have to, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you could <laughs> – they've come out with a wireless system now that we can put in for you that's half the price of putting in a hardwired system. Mm-hmm. Now, there is the other way of doing it, too. You could go buy a package of, uh, uh, of smoke detectors that are battery-operated only, and they stick to the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can buy a pack of four. And that, you know? that requires uh, a little human responsibility to change the batteries every uh, daylight savings, right. right? Right, right. I mean, how good are they? We don't know. They're not. They're generic, you know. But the high-wired systems, they all go off. That's the thing. One goes off, they all go off. So yeah. it's kind of hard for you not to hear it. Where right. a, a battery-operated one, God forbid, that one doesn't go off, you're not going to hear it, anything. It always, it, it's, it's always very sad to me when you turn on the news and you see that a house burned down and they say there were smoke detectors, but they didn't have working batteries. It's Ugh. like, what? what is the point? <laughs> you know? We all do it. Yeah, exactly. and, and everybody gets lazy. You think, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get some 9 volts, and you forget about it. So uh, yeah. I, I would think that, and, and you have to do a plan design with these wireless ones and submit it to the fire inspector or no? Family. Not, not a single, single family. Not a single family. Okay, good. That's why. I, I'm targeting right now. I'm talking right now strictly about single family homes because once you get into multi families, it turns into a different ball game. Oh, yeah. Right. Family. So right. it just, it's a whole nother ball game. But we, but but, uh, we single should. Single family pr- homes, these are definite. You have to make sure they're done. Just at least a couple. Just what I'm saying is play that game and, and at least put a few in the house to make it look like you're being safe. So that way they don't bring it up and say, well, you should have this done and that done. If you show that you put a lot of effort into it, put a smoke in each bedroom, mm-hmm. put a carbon smoke in the hallway, and mm-hmm. put a smoke in the basement, and you're done. That's and, it. And for our listeners, oh, and for, and for our listeners, by the way, if your single-family home was built after 2004, okay, you have to have hardwired 
uh, smoke de in carbon detectors in your house. If you have an addition on your house that was built after 2004, yeah. that rolls with that as well. Okay, and when you sell your house, you have to get the the fire marshal has to come in from that community and has to pass the smoke and uh, and carbon monoxide uh, detectors. So if you don't have that done, it's a perfect reason to call Mike O'Neill, 401-559-9801. Right? That's a great point, Emilio. 2004, and, and four, that is such a good point. So if you're looking between a few houses and you see that this one is a pretty giant 35, 3600 square foot house that's built in 2007, yep. and you know there's no smokes, you might want to consider... You know, budgeting for it or looking for another home because you just you know firsthand, Amelia was kind of come up with you and um, people are shocked to see. Oh my God, it costs that much. Well, it, it it all depends on when it was built and how big it is and the layout. At least if you try to put a few battery ones up, yeah, make it look like you're being safe. It doesn't get brought up on the report. Well, well, if I if I was a buyer, I would I, I if I was a buyer, I'd make sure I had an agent to know that that's the seller's responsibility. To do so now, the seller and the buyer could waive the responsibility, and basically the buyer could take over that responsibility, and he'd have to or she would have to get those done before moving in and occupying the residence. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. yeah, so those are all very valid points. I, I would even be inclined to, as a buyer, um, to look and make sure that there was a permit pulled if the hard wires are actually in the house, and make sure that it was legitimately done with a permit and inspected oh, yeah. just for that safety. That is another good point. Yeah. And if you found that you're buying a house that you know a lot of risky uh, construction has been done in the last 20 years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you want to see that it's been inspected because if it hasn't, that means the, uh, the builder tried to do everything himself. Good possibility. Yeah. Good possibility. Yep. Farm and electrical, everything, you know. So circuits and fuses were the last one on your list. Tell us about yeah, those. Uh, so, obviously, the main components to a home for heating and electrical is the boiler and a panel. Yep. Well, if, if the panel is the original you're going to have to have it replaced. Uh, if it's more than 30 years old, old you're going to have to have it replaced. So a good thing to do would be to make sure that your electrical system is at least safe and brought up to date for, for room for extra circuits. Because if it's, if it's packed full and it looks old and it's got a little bit of rust on it, a little corrosion at all, they're going to make you change out everything. And then that's when it, everything becomes a bigger deal and more expensive. So you just... Yeah. You, if you could just replace the panel and check out the outside and make sure it's weatherproof and nothing uh, is exposed, like the, the, the table is in decent condition and there's no rust around the can, then you're okay. It won't get brought up. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as, as soon as they start seeing things that aren't touched over the last 40 years, they know it's been neglected. They're going to make you ground the system with two ground rods. They're going to make you put... Uh, you know, a pull chain LED light in front, GFCI protection right by the panel. They're going to make you update the service and, mm -hmm. and change out the whole thing. So, I, I, some I, things to look out for. Make, make sure it's tidied up. Change I, the panel. I actually ran into that issue um, on a home that I bought about eight years ago, and I had no idea. It had a Federal Pacific panel. And the inspector made a huge deal out of it. And he was like, yeah, they burned down a ton of houses. And I said, well, the wow. house hasn't burned down in 40 years. But you know what? I had to replace that panel before I could go sell my house because nobody else was going to buy the house with no. that panel. <laughs> no. Mike, do, yep, exactly. do you, now, now, Mike, do you do any kind of pre-listing home inspections? I'm sure there'd be a cost to that. But let's just say if you went inside somebody's house and you looked at all of their stuff as a licensed and reputable local electrician, would you do that for our sellers and go in and kind of look well, at everything? That's a great point. I, what I could do is I could make it a um, not the knob and tube inspection we do, which is check every circuit, but just the overall inspection, make sure everything's vented, uh, proper amount of everything. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I could definitely do that. I could set up uh, a certain fee for this much square footage and less. Yep. You know, the average of a, a house is probably like 2,800 square feet, something like that. I could have one fee or more than 2,500 or something is another fee, you know, something like that. So, so here's why I asked that, and I think it would be, you know, really great to offer uh, because when, you know, if you're a seller, 
and you're going to sell your property, having that knowledge and knowing what needs to be done up front, again, is going to save you more money than when a home inspector comes in and says, you've got to do this, 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 and this. A, buyers get scared they could walk. B, they're going to ask yeah. for a tremendous amount of credits to do so. So if you can come in and kind of suggest that and take care of it, and then my suggestion, you know, and maybe I shouldn't even throw this out there, Mike, you might kill me after, would be... No. If they use you to do that work to refund them either, you know, a good portion of that fee or all of it for the inspection, win win. Yeah. Win 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 yeah, situation. Exactly. That's exactly what we would do. Yes. Call Mike O'Neill, 401 559 9801. Mike O'Neill, owner of BK Electric. 